Hi, my name is Tyler Moss and I'm currently a Mac student at Southern Utah University. I am enrolled in the Accounting Ethics Seminar class for the 2013 summer semester. The topic that I have chosen for my research paper and presentation number three is codes of contact. Codes of conduct, do they work? First, I will discuss the history of codes of conduct. Second, I'll discuss the purposes of codes of conduct. Third, I'll discuss employee and organization commitment to these codes of conduct. Fourth, I'll discuss the types of businesses that use codes of conduct. And fifth, I'll discuss what a prisoner's dilemma is and how it relates to codes of conduct. The use of codes of conduct in business organizations can trace its history back to before World War II. Johnson & Johnson is one of the companies with the earliest known code, uh, codes of conduct. The Sarbanes-Oxley Sarbanes Act was passed in 2002 and this increased the importance of public companies having a code of conduct. Having a code of conduct became practically a mandate for public companies. Critics argued against the mandated approach of codes of conduct because of the 3P approach. Print a code of, co print a code of conduct post it on the wall, and pray people actually read it. Principles provide the individuals within an organization the basic principles that they should be following while being a part of the organization. A corporation code of conduct needs to have an incentive for following it as well. When I think of organizational commitment, I think back to a few classes within my undergraduate program and this graduate program and remember the term, the tone from the top. When I think of the tone from the top, I believe that the organization has to be committed to the code of conduct that they are presenting to the rest of the organization. However, to have true success with the code of conduct, the employee also needs to be fully committed to it as well. The goals need to be presented fully to the employees so that they can choose to be loyal and stand up for the code of conduct. In my research of codes of conduct, I ran into an article that discussed one part of a code of conduct that many corporations and organizations were having difficulty enforcing. That was in regards to information and communications technology. As you can see, the professional sectors with the highest percentage of codes of conduct in place are the following. Health and medical in the private sector and manufacturing. What is really interesting is the fact that the health and medical in the public has 0% for those that were serving that actually have a code of conduct in place. The basic explanation for a prisoner's dilemma is described by a situation where two individuals might be inclined not to cooperate even if, even if it is in the best interest to do so. The basic example that is usually given is that two gang members are imprisoned. One prisoner is in one jail cell and another prisoner in another cell. They cannot speak to each other. Both are going to be sentenced to, to one year in prison. Each prisoner is offered their freedom if they will testify against the other person. The other partner will get three years in prison if testified against. However, if both prisoners testify against each other, then both will be sentenced to two years of prison time. If both stay silent, there's only one year of prison time. If one testifies against the other, the other stays silent. Excuse me. If one testifies against the other and the other stays silent, then one is free and one is in prison for three years. Because of our natural self-interest and, and wanting to have self-interest for ourselves, most individuals are going to betray the other prisoner because the benefits are greater. In one article that I'm using for my research, an argument is presented stating that, the, that following a business code of ethics is a classic prisoner's dilemma. Asking businesses to conform to voluntary codes of ethics in a competitive environment creates a prisoner's dilemma. Other companies might be violating their code of ethics, therefore putting them ahead of other businesses, businesses and giving them a competitive advantage. However, they also argue that in theory, consumers and investors can reward ethical business practices, undercutting the problem of the prisoner's dilemma. In conclusion, I discuss the history and purpose of codes of conduct and corporate ethical codes. I also discuss corporate and employee commitment to codes of conduct, conduct and which businesses are actually using them. 
I also discuss the concept of the prisoner's dilemma and the use of codes of conduct creating prisoner's dilemmas. I believe that codes of conduct's conduct work. However, they only work if upper management and the organization are committed to them. Employees also have to be committed to them. The codes need to be implemented into the corporate culture and taught, revised, and reviewed, reviewed periodically to ensure that all individuals are aware of the code of conduct within their organization.